The Knicks turn the corner. Mikael Bridges finally breaking out of his shooting slump. This could be a great sign for the Knicks. The Knicks offensively have been great. It's the defense that have been kind of questionable at times. Because offensively, you could see here, the Knicks are second in the league in three-point percentage which is like the complete opposite of what they've been the past few years. One of the things that they have needed in these last few years is more three-point shooting and more efficient three-point shooting. And well, now they have it. One of the other things that it's felt like the Knicks have struggled with is being a top assist team. I feel like they were close to the bottom last year and the year before, and they played a ton of iso ball. Well, look, they're top 10 in assists this year, which is actually shocking, but amazing to me. A team that was struggling mightily a couple weeks ago might have turned the corner. And if you watch the Knicks play, you know that OG has been playing some of the best basketball of his career. OG is just on fire, on point every single night. His defense has been off the charts. Yes, he's struggled a couple of games shooting, but that's every player. He has been consistently one of their best scorers this season. Obviously, you could say Cat has been their most consistent scorer because I believe he's still their leading scorer, and he has been offensively very, very good as well. But oh gee, it's just like every night you know what you're getting from him this season. Like, I feel like every game we see at least three OG dunks and like three OG layups. Like, he is at the right place at the right time everywhere this season. But like I said earlier, one of the things that the Knicks have struggled with is their defense. And everybody knew when they traded for Cat, Cat is a offensive-minded center, not a defensive-minded center. And so by getting him and not getting Isaiah Hartenstein back and Mitchell Robinson being out and Precious Achua being out, their defense, especially in the front court, was going to struggle a bit. I thought they would be better defensively to start the season because they still had OG and they got Mikhail Bridges those two are two of the top wing defenders in the league. And you still had Josh Hart. And like I said, OG has been on point defensively, but he can't do it all by himself. Something I just kind of thought about is that I just mentioned how Mikael Bridges just broke out of his shooting slump. Well, sometimes with players, if they are not shooting the ball well, it affects their defense. And I'm not saying Mikael Bridges wasn't trying on defense, but it's just natural. Like it just happens when your shot is not falling you lose confidence, and it just tends to affect your defensive ability. That's why players who always end up being great on defense, even when their shot isn't falling, they get applauded for that because it's hard to do when you know that you don't have confidence in your shot for the, any given game. And so I don't know statistically if Mikhail Bridges has been not as good of a defender. Like, I don't know the stats behind that. But that may be part of the reason as to why their defense has, you know, not been as good. But again, one of the main reasons, of course, is also they don't have Mitchell Robinson and they don't have Precious Achua. So those are their two defensive centers. And again, Cat is not known for defense and he probably will never be known for defense. Like I said earlier in the season, I definitely have seen him try more on defense than some other times with Minnesota. But the fact of the matter is he's never going to be a top tier defender. And because you don't have any backup center who is a top-tier defender like Mitchell Robinson to back him up because he is unhealthy, that's a big reason as to why their defense has just been okay. Like some games they are good defensively and some games they are not. Basically, it's inconsistent and that kind of, you know, speaks to Mikhail Bridges' like shooting slumps. And again, not having Mitchell Robinson. So I think it does make sense why they've been struggling a bit defensively. But I still did expect them to be a bit better, even without Mitchell Robinson. But offensively, like I said, they have been putting it together. Cat and Brunson, that combo has been so nice. And Cameron Payne has been very good off the bench. He was really good off the bench in Phoenix, too. And we know Miles McBride is basically automatic on offense now. I know his stats probably don't say he's shooting automatically, but it just seems like every time he shoots, it goes in. His confidence is off the charts. I do think the Knicks are starting to turn the corner. When you incorporate a player like Cat, who is a former all-star and someone who is going to be a focal point of the offense, it's going to take time. I don't think the Knicks are done yet though. I think they could be in the market for another little trade. I feel like as we get closer to the trade deadline and players become available, the Knicks name will start popping up a lot. And their young guys have been playing well when they get minutes too. Shout out to the rookies. Obviously they can't get back Dante DiVincenzo, which I'm sure they would love to, but someone like that, like maybe a guard who can shoot the three and play defense, or maybe another wing player potentially off the bench. Basically someone of that caliber who wouldn't cost them, you know, a whole bunch of players on their team. Jordan Clarkson wouldn't work because 
I believe he's making upwards of 20 million per year and obviously the Knicks can't match that salary unless they included one of their top guys. So it wouldn't be Jordan Clarkson, but like someone on that level. And also Jordan Clarkson is not necessarily the best defender, but we know he can light it up. Like on offense, he's automatic. I don't know if the Brooklyn Nets are gonna wanna do another deal with the Knicks, <laughs> but maybe you can talk to the Nets because apparently basically everybody on the team is available. So maybe you can get someone like a Dorian Finney-Smith. And he obviously can play two-way. He can shoot the three, and we know he's known as a defender. So he could definitely fit their team. Or maybe you can bring over Michaela Bridges' friend, Cam Johnson. Although Cam Johnson did get a new contract pretty recently. And so I don't think the Knicks can do that because, again, they would have to include somebody who's making a decent amount of money because I believe Cam Johnson's making close to $20 million also. Maybe you could talk to the Chicago Bulls. I don't know if they have anybody who the Knicks want, but they are definitely a team who is looking to sell as well. And then Utah, I said Jordan Clarkson, but again, not him. Utah may be in the market to, you know, give players at the trade deadline so they could talk to the Jazz as well and see what's there, but... I don't think the Knicks are done, but I do think they might have turned the corner. And I think if Mitchell Robinson can come back healthy, this team is a team to watch out for in the Eastern Conference. I talked about yesterday with the Atlanta Hawks, how they could be like a dark horse. Because for some reason, even though they don't have the star power of some other teams, and on any given night, they could beat anybody. Consistency is kind of the issue with the Hawks. Like, some nights it just doesn't make sense why they're not winning. But like I talked about it, when they play the Celtics, they always seem to give the Celtics a hard time. But I don't consider the Knicks a dark horse in the East. I consider them an actual contender. And I think if they're fully healthy and Mitchell Robinson is playing the way that he was playing before he got hurt, because if you remember, he was really like crushing it on the boards defensively. It was really something to watch. And so if they have that, and then they have Cat on his, you know, offensive side of the ball. That's a nice combo. I don't think they can play together, though. I That was something I talked about earlier, you know, before the season started. I didn't necessarily love the fit of Cat and Mitchell Robinson playing at the same time. Because I don't think that makes much sense. Because to me, it's kind of similar to Rudy Gobert with Cat. And that wasn't the best fit. So I didn't really get that. But as long as they're not playing on the court at the same time, for the most part, this could be a really dangerous team. And I still say they can come out of the East, especially with Philly having all the issues they're having and they can't get healthy. Obviously the Celtics are the team to watch out for, right? They're the defending champions. They just got healthy and they still look like a very good team. And then the Cavaliers are having an amazing season, but I still think the Knicks could beat both of those teams. I'm not saying they necessarily will. They could also lose to those teams but I would give them a good chance to beat those teams. I really hope we see the Knicks match up with the Celtics in the playoffs and the Cavs too, but they already played the Cavs a couple of times, so we've seen it. But like, I want to see Celtics versus Knicks. I've wanted to see it for the last couple of years because I've been saying it for the last couple of years. I think the Knicks can beat the Celtics. I know, that's a hot take. I know everyone doesn't agree with that. And again, not necessarily taking the Knicks over Boston, I just think they're one of the few teams that can actually beat them in the Eastern Conference.